Today we are going to start a new design challenge. Here is a picture of President Richard Nixon signing into law the National Cancer Act of 1971. This law represented the commitment of the United States to what President Nixon described as the war on cancer. By signing this law, President Nixon established the National Cancer Institute, the National Cancer Advisory Board, and the President's Cancer Panel. He also directed new funding towards establishing 15 new cancer research centers. It's been about 50 years since the National Cancer Act of 1971, and although a lot of progress has been made, we still haven't won the war on cancer. For example, we still don't even understand all the basic science of how cancer develops and evolves. Unfortunately, the majority of cancer research and pharmaceutical funding has been aimed at finding better drugs to fight cancer. And while these drugs can kill cancer cells, they can also healthy cells as well. This makes it very unpleasant for people to take these drugs. Additionally, these drugs often only prolong a person's life by a few months or maybe a few years. The alternative to fighting cancer after it has developed is detecting cancer at an early stage. So focusing more on detection at an early stage. Cervical cancer is a good example of this. Cervical cancer used to be the number one cancer in the US about 50 to 60 years ago. But after the relatively non-invasive and inexpensive pap smear was developed, mortality rates went down by a factor of 10. So what if instead more cancer research was focused on detecting and treating cancer at an ultra early stage? The goal here might be to develop a two-tiered screening strategy for all major cancers, just as there is for cervical cancer. As part of this two-tiered strategy, we might first screen everyone in order to identify a small group of patients that are at higher risk for a particular type of cancer. So screen everyone and identify small group at high risk. And then second, we could follow up with only those people who are at high risk. So take the high risk people and offer them a more definitive test, which might be more expensive and also possibly more invasive. So test only them with the more definitive test, which might be more expensive and more invasive. This way, only those people who are at high risk would need to go through the more expensive and in invasive procedure. For example, a lot of people are not screened for colon cancer because no one wants to experience a colonoscopy. Colonoscopies are very effective, but they are also very invasive. If a two-tiered screening strategy were developed for colon cancer, more people might be willing to get screened at the first stage, and then more cases of cancer might be detected earlier. There are actually already many non-invasive tests for detecting cancer, like blood or urine tests. Unfortunately, these tests are focused on finding just a few abnormal cells in a relatively large sample. And this is akin to finding a needle in a haystack. It's a very difficult detection style. As a result, these techniques can work well at detecting large tumors after they've already developed, but they are very ineffective at detecting cancer at a very early stage. So instead, to develop an ultra-early non-invasive cancer screening test, let's consider the basic question how does cancer begin to develop in the body? Do we know?